Airtable is a great tool for structuring your data, but when it comes to getting that data outside of Airtable and into the hands of your customers, document generation isn't one of the biggest strengths of Airtable. In fact, when we created a recent video on how you can create an interface for invoice generation, the top question we were asked is, yeah, but how do we actually get the PDF of that invoice to be able to get it to our customers? So that's what we're gonna cover in this video. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from automationhelpers.com and we're an Airtable implementation partner. Now the tool that we're talking about today is called Docs Automator and it's one that we've recently really enjoyed using with our clients. If you haven't gotten started with it yet, you can sign up for free using the link in the description below. Now Docs Automator is built around the premise that Google has its own templating language. That's right, you can go to your own Google Drive account today and nothing to do with Airtable, you can create your own templates. So right now I've got an invoice template that we're taking a look at and I've set this up using curly braces. So we're essentially identifying variables that we want to put in between these curly braces and then we're going to inject data into where those variables are to replace that with our actual data. Now this templating language is not specific to Airtable, but what Docs Automator allows us to do is use Airtable as a data source and then gives us some tools, some mapping that we have in the background to be able to take our Airtable data and then send it into our Google template. And then when we're done, it can actually generate a PDF from that and write it back into Airtable. One of the things I think you'll really appreciate about Docs Automator pricing is that they have such a generous free plan. So for $0 a month, you can get started with up to 50 documents for free per month. That means for some clients, you can just use it for free. You don't even have to worry about pricing after that. But if you wanna get enhanced support, you can do that and get some non-expiring PDFs if you pay a little bit more for that. Now, while we talk a lot about Airtable on our channel, we've also been working on client projects for Glide. So Glide is another option that you can use with Docs Automator. If you're using ClickUp, that's another one. And we're sure that there will be future integrations as well. If you wanna get up and running quickly, we have this document available as a template on our website, you can click in the description below. Let's get started by creating a new automation. In our case, we're gonna give this a title of invoice because we're going to be creating invoices from our structured data inside of Airtable. Our data source will choose from Airtable and I've already got mine connected, but it's a really easy process to get up and running. Next, I just need to paste the link to my Google Docs template. And I've got some different settings here at a high level about how I want certain formatting options to work in my document. So I'm in the US, this works fine. I'm gonna turn on this formatting of numbers here so we'll have commas included. And then in this case, we're looking at how we're formatting dates. I really love that this feature is here because oftentimes we forget about formatting of dates and then it looks really nasty in documents. So I think this works for the most part. I'm just gonna change it so that we have 12 hours instead of 24 hours. Now you have an option here to save a Google document as well. So it really comes down to, do you just want the PDF that's being generated? Or do you need a document that maybe people will manually make tweaks to, and then you'll regenerate a document after that? In this case, I don't really care about the Google Doc. You can also choose if you want the documents to expire. So they're being stored on Docs Automator servers. If you wanna clear them out at a certain point, you can do that. And we're gonna write this document back into Airtable. And so we have to determine when we generate a new document, do we want that to overwrite it? So if there was already a document and we press a button again, should it clear that out and add this document instead? or do we want to append it? It will create a second attachment. So we have different versions of this. In my case, I'm gonna overwrite it. Now I need to tell it what base we're choosing. So we've given it access to just one base in this case. We're choosing which table we're coming from. So in this case, we've structured this as an invoices table. I have my invoices. I have my invoice lines, which are linked to my invoices. I've got my products. I have an account, which is linked. So this is all the data that you would expect if you need help in structuring this, you can check out our linked video below on our invoice generator interface. Now we need to tell it what to name the document. And what's really cool is we can use Airtable formulas here to concatenate information if we wanna give it a really unique name. I'm fine just using the invoice ID itself, but maybe you wanna have the customer's name followed by the invoice date, followed by the ID of the invoice. And then we can choose which attachments field we want to write this back to when we're actually taking the finished document to send it back to Airtable. Now comes the mapping part where we take which fields that we have and where we want them to map to in the document. On the left-hand side, we have the fields that are actually part of our Google document. 
On the right hand side, we can map it to our corresponding Airtable fields. So I've got a picker here and I can go through and take all of my fields and map them over. I've finished mapping my core fields here. And just a reminder that these fields can come from the invoice table itself, or you can have lookups to other tables. So in this case, the address is actually coming from the accounts table and I'm looking that up. We can still use that as a field that we use on our invoice even though it's not really a property of the invoice table, it's coming from the account. Next up, we're going to map our invoice line items. Now, this is a feature that's really important. Any tool that you go with to help you with document generation, you always want to make sure that you can somehow iterate through different lines that you have. In this case, we've got the invoice, and then we have the different products and amounts that people are purchasing. Those are line items. But this works in other scenarios too. You might be doing event planning and you want to list different contacts or list different addresses. Those are all use cases for line items. Here it's essential that we have a table. So in this table, we actually have two different rows. In the first row, we've got product, quantity, amount, and subtotal. These are the names of the fields. And then down here, we have what we're actually injecting into the table. And it's important that you use this format. It's all lowercase. We've got line underscore items underscore, and now we put in the name of the field that we want. So in order to get it to register over here in the line items area, we need to make sure that we are very careful about our naming conventions. The other cool thing that you can do is if the order of those line items matter to you or the filtering matters to you, you only want to have certain line items showing on this document, you can choose a specific view that you've created and it will honor the properties of that view. So I might wanna say, oh, hey, let's have it go from highest quantity down to lowest quantity, or maybe we go by price, and you can construct that in the view. In the same way here, we can map our line item fields, and now we should be good to go. So I can actually pull from existing Airtable records. I'm gonna choose this 1007 invoice, and we can generate a preview. Now, it might look a little small for you on the screen, but as I'm scanning this, it looks like everything mapped correctly, so we're good to go for our document generation. Now, there's a few different ways to configure this for your automation. You could do this via an extension. You could run this in an automation. You could do this as a webhook. In our case, we have an interface, and we want to be able to click a button in the interface to be able to start this process. So I'm gonna use this webhook and I'm going to click to copy that information. And then I've created a new field inside of Airtable on the invoice and I'm calling this invoice webhook and I can simply paste in this information. So we've got our webhook and it's concatenating the ID of that unique record. Now I can add a button inside of my interface. I've got this to generate PDF and I'm going to, instead of going to an external URL, I'm going to go to a URL in record. And we're going to look up the field for that invoice webhook that we just created. I'm also gonna add an invoice PDF here so that when the PDF gets written over, this attachments field populates with the actual document itself. Let's give it a try. I'm gonna press generate PDF and we've got that same invoice that we saw in our preview. And now our document's been created for us. We can see it here in our attachments field. We can go ahead and open that up and it's ready for our client. Now there's plenty more awesome options that you can do with Docs Automator, including actually adding multiple sets of line items if you need to, and you can inject images dynamically. So maybe we want to put on the logo of our customer and we have that as an attachments field in Airtable, we can push that into our documents as well. I hope this has been helpful to see an option that you have when it comes to generating documents inside of Airtable. If you have any questions about your own Airtable setup, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations. 